Best Irish music on irishradio.org with Jerry Byrne. Irish Radio, I'm Jerry Byrne. Since uh, lockdown began, I've been speaking to many of the great and the good and the talent of uh, Irish entertainment. A boy, we've got an incredible amount of talent for such a small country. I've got a gentleman who originally hails from Rathlin Island, the famous Rathlin Island. Resident in Donegal, has been involved in music for many, many moons. I'm delighted to say hello to uh, Al McQuilkin. Al, how are you? Not so bad, Jerry. Al, lovely to... Thanks for having me on. Lovely to lovely to, to to catch up with you. Uh, tell me, listen, you've been a you've been a busy man. You've been involved in music for a long, long time. I uh, since really since I was since I was thirteen, Jay. Uh, I would start up playing local pubs and you know local groups at home, and then uh, joined this sort of professional band started around nineteen eighty six. So I suppose that's about thirty five years thirty five years ago now. Right, right. It's a long, long time, and uh, you, you've played with many. You, you, you went to. Uh, you were with Hugo Duncan in, in the nineteen eighties. Mid mid eighties, I joined Hugo, and was with Hugo for about two years, and then Dominic Kerwin had just been signed by Ritz Records in with nineteen eighty eight, and uh, took a job with Dominic, and then was I was there for t- all of ten years. Right, that was a. Um, it was really good. There some, some great times there, you know, we, we toured with Charlie Pride back in 1990, we done a full full UK theatre tour with Charlie Pride, and then 1991, we done the same thing with Tommy Onet, late, late, great Tommy Onet, should have said the late Charlie Pride, that's right, Charlie's left us now too. Indeed, indeed, so, uh, that, that must have been a, you know, fantastic experience, like, as as well as touring with Dominic, but then to, to be able to tour with the likes of, uh, you know, li- quite literally household lames like uh, the late Charlie Pride and the late Tommy Onet. Oh, it was unreal. It really was. It was just, it was, you know, such a, such a buzz. Like, you know, one of the first LPs, I think, ever to come into our house at home years ago, many years ago, was, um, it was Charlie Pride Live from Panther Hall, Fort Worth. Charlie Pride in person. And that, that LP was played, I think, nearly fell to pieces, you know. It was, <laughs> so to get to actually spend time on a tour, I watched all, I watched Charlie's show every night. And it's just, you just couldn't get tired of it. It was so good. Yes. The band, the band were great. They're all really nice bunch of people. Yes, yes, he was. He was one of the, the you know, the uh, the likes of him and D. Tommy Winnett. I mean, there were two, uh, you know, absolute consummate professionals. Oh, fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. It really were. Indeed. Um, t- Tommy would have been more, t- Tommy would have been more secluded. She was kept more or less to herself, kind of thing, you know, whereas Charlie, Charlie, Charlie Pye would have just walked into your dressing room with a, an acoustic guitar on him and, and start to sing a song, you know, and expected everybody to start singing harmony with him. And he was, he was just so relaxed and laid back. It was great. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, you, you know, he, he, gave, he gave that impression of being sort of, uh, uh, you know, sort of one of the guys, like, you know, and uh, he didn't see himself as, uh, you know, been anything any different to you or anybody else. Yeah, it was, it was Charlie. It was Charlie came came from a from a, a very poor background too. You know, he, he he grew up through the hard times, and I would imagine had to had to struggle a lot to get to get where he got to in the early days too. So, indeed, he, he obviously didn't forget forget his roots. You know. Indeed so, indeed so. That's uh, you know, that's uh, that, uh, that was one of the things, and uh, uh, you know, he certainly he he certainly had a phenomenal career in uh, in music. Uh, but you you've been uh, playing like for uh, you know for all these years, right throughout the nineties, touring with uh, those artists, and uh, uh, then you joined the Mike Denver Band. Yeah, I have to go through a few few other moves with Michael English, Philomena Begley, Patrick Finney, and ended up joining Mike eleven years ago. Right. And it's been, been the most enjoyable eleven years ever. You know, it's been absolutely great. Mike's been great to work with. I'm really the manager, and all the boys that have been in the band and have come and gone, and they're all great guys to work with. Indeed, indeed. I must say, I've seen you many, many times uh, on on stage uh, with Mike, and uh, I must say, very, very uh, professional band. Yeah, well, all, all the guys, all the guys in the band, especially, are all you know, they're, they're, they've been around the. Been around all the, the, the halls and the, the doors and the corners for, for many, many years now. And all. Uh, you know, they all know their job, they all know what they're doing, and they're all, they're all very professional fellows. 
Yes, indeed. Yeah, they get the, the impression as uh, as people used to say back in the in 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 the day, the, the, uh, very very tight uh, setup on stage. It was. I don't say the band. The band is very tight. Well, no, I would imagine if we just got together at this moment in time, it wouldn't just be so tight now. <laughs> after a year, after a year away from it, so. Indeed, yes, indeed, indeed. It's uh, this is the uh, this is undoubtedly the longest time since you were a child that you haven't been playing on stage. Up and up until the eighth of March this year, I never have actually missed one weekend's work since nineteen eighty six. I've never been out of work for any more than a couple of days, really. You know, yes. it's just this is phenomenally crazy. It's a crazy time. But we're all, every, every musician in the world is feeling like this most, you know. Well, indeed, so that is the that is the one thing about it that is quite literally is uh, it's every musician in the world. It's also every I mean it's 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 every theatre person. It's everybody from uh, the musicals. I mean uh, the West End of London, Broadway in New York. Uh, they, they're all you know the the all of the top night spots in Paris or whatever city you go to in the world. There is absolutely nothing happening. That's true. So it's saying it was sad but true, but it is it is sad but true. You know, and it's. Even like an hour scene at home, I mean, you know, theatres, hotels, you know, concerts and dances. Everybody from the from bars, extra bar staff that will be on in the hotels to door staff, taxi drivers. Everybody's feeling feeling the hit. Indeed, from the from the lack of entertainment, you know. It's Indeed, it is. It's a uh... tough time. It is. It really is. You know, it's, 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 it has been truly, there's no question, it's been truly phenomenal. And uh, I don't think, no, one thing about it was that uh, many of us, uh, you know, involved in, in, in entertainment in any way, we, we, we always at times we try and look through the crystal ball and sort of see uh, that something that could happen down the road or whatever. But this is certainly something that nobody could ever have foreseen. No, definitely, definitely not. Uh, it's just, we were, it's just, it seems to just come from nowhere, absolutely, literally nowhere, because we were working on the Gertie, the Gertie Brown cruise in, of Mexico last last February. And as we're coming back through the airport, there was a few people going about with masks on. They were, you were actually thinking to yourself, of just, you know, you're really blown this out of proportion. This, this, is, this, is not, this, not, you know, this, this is not as bad as people are making it out to be, you know. I'll tell you, a few, a few, a few more weeks down the road, we knew, we knew, we knew what it was all about, you know. Indeed, so. Indeed, so. Uh, you know, it was, it was, it was something uh, truly incredible. Uh, we, you know, whenever initially when we started seeing sort of the mask first and that, we really didn't, we didn't think, you know, this, this could be real or this could be anything, uh, you know, like this. Because we'd heard about uh, other various things which came down the road before, be it in uh, parts of Asia or uh, Africa or other parts of the world. But uh, it, it never, you know, hit uh, Europe in a, on any sort of a major scale. Well, that's true. I suppose you know. It's not that we see see ourselves as indestructible or anything like that. But you just, I suppose, you're that used. Everything everything runs smoothly, basically, and 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 in this part of the world, you know, generally, you just you don't you don't expect anything to hit you, like a, you know, like a sledgehammer blow like that. You know, it's just um, if if of March we played from the Clan, Clanway in Letter Kenny, and I think we were to be out on the th- following. That was a Sunday night. I think we were to be out the following Thursday night, and it was an email came from Molly Carey's office to say all gigs were postponed until the 29th of March. Right. And the first thought was, you know, it was great. Three three weeks off. Yes. Because like we were ridic- ridiculously busy like the whole time, you know. So three weeks off, and the weather was, the weather was good. So this this is an unexpected holiday. Just little, little to be known, you know, a, a year later, we still in the same situation. Indeed, indeed. So I, I remember that thinking, yeah, you know, it was going to be uh, just a you know, couple of weeks, two weeks, three weeks, uh, but, you know, poss- yeah. possibly four weeks. But, uh, uh, you know, I said, I think initially many people uh, sort of saw it over the first couple of days as though that's all it was going to be. But as the time went on, uh, the seriousness uh, sort of uh, began to sink in. And uh, I think many people then were thinking, well, how can uh, things take off again in another three weeks or four weeks? You know, it just... Uh, 
the, the, the possibilities became harder and harder at that stage. Mm. Most of us in the, in the music business, I know we were, were, were looking at September, October. Yes. Thought, you know, definitely will be there'll be something happening by September, October again. You know. Yes. Yes. On that. It's just. You know, I know. It's just. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say other people who are uh, who are even uh, you know sort of less pessimistic thought well it could be coming up to Christmas uh, when something would uh, happen but uh, Christmas and New Year and the whole lot has come and gone and there ain't nothing and unlikely to be anything for a while as yet. That's it, yeah. And until I don't know what some people are for vaccines, some people are against vaccines. You know, it's that's everybody's own <coughs> everybody's own choice. Personally, I think until the vaccine is fairly widely, you know, given out to everybody. It's there's no there's no hope really of, of, of any kind of concerts, dances, whatever coming back, you know what it's just it, no, I can't see it. No, exactly. I'd love to see it I'd love to see it could but I can't see it. I just can't. No, I can't know it uh uh, really, we'd say it depends on the at this stage. It depends on the vaccine rollout, and that's sort of the bottom the bottom line of it at this stage. Al, you've you've, I think so. yeah. you've, re- you've released a couple of uh, tracks. You released uh, uh, an interesting one on the uh, uh, the steel guitar, uh, a little uh, tribute to uh, Charlie Pride. Some of the uh, some of the songs which he had hits with. I did well. Releasing singles and that was, <laughs> would, would never have been my thing. You know, I was always just popping up in. Sideman, back on the singer, whatever. But I suppose when you have a lot of, a lot of time in your hands to do nothing else, you know, you, you start to get an, an idea into your head. Sure, I might as well record something and fire it out there. And just with Charlie passing away, you know, just I thought, why not just recognize the man's great Indeed. musical. Indeed. You know, so that's, that's what it is. That's, I went ahead and recorded that at home, and um, between myself and this a good friend of mine, Brian Kerrigan, and Larry Kenny, is at Harmony Studios. He mixed it for me, and we popped it out there to see how, how it was done. Hopefully, hopefully, the listeners will like it now. Right, yeah, sounds sounds good. You've also recorded a, a, another one. Uh, I, I've just destroyed the world I'm uh, living in. Oh yeah, they they call me Twitty. So. Um, First heard Buddy Emmons doing that was a steel instrumental many years ago, and always liked the tune. And I just I stuck it down, and as, as I say, just sent out the MP3s to see if it would get any airplay. And it seemed to get a nice bit of airplay because steel guitar instrumentals aren't something that you know you're you're not going to hear on the radio every day of the week. I know you know exactly. That is for sure. That is for sure. No question. No question or doubt about that. And it's, uh, you know, I have to say it does, uh, you know, it does sound, it does sound good. And, uh, it, you know, well done. Well done on doing it. Uh, it's amazing when you get time like that. Uh, uh, there's uh, so many musicians who've uh, sort of uh, uh, g- got creative and uh, decided to do things that they normally would never have done. Well, that's true. You know, as I say, when you have no of time in your hands, you will... You'll, you'll delve into stuff that you never would probably think of doing before, and you end up with some kind of a some kind of a project out of it, you know. Indeed, and you know, as you say, the thing about the uh, uh, you know about the, the the steel guitar is that there are but there really are. Uh, uh, very, very few uh, people have actually, uh, you know, released an album off or released uh, a track, I should say, off uh, just an instrumental on the uh, the steel guitar. Very scarce in this in this thing this thing the the, the the world anyway. Of course in the States you would have loads of you know, your buddy Emmons, Lloyd Green, John Huey, to name just three of, of many, many great, great steel guitar players who have, have released albums all through the years. Indeed. But it never, never, never seemed to be much of a thing on this this side of the world. Indeed. Indeed, yeah, it just shows you possibly it is because they you know, the steel guitar is possibly more uh, prevalent uh, in uh, in America than it uh, possibly is uh, on the, this side of the pond. I am unfortunately that's, that's dying away too, Jerry. You know, uh, with the, this modern country that's just come out now, it's, it doesn't it doesn't seem to be really much call for state, fiddle, fiddling speed anymore. It's it's getting scarce, you know. Sad to say. Yes, it's. Uh, it appears to be all right on, on the modern. Uh, certainly, the modern country coming out of America is very heavy electric guitar led. That is, it's. It's. Pardon me, 
my own beliefs on, on it. And like, we just, <laughs> we just, we just leave that there. <laughs> yes, yes, a number, yes, a number of people have, have said that. Uh, about it ah listen it's been lovely to lovely to chat to you thanks very very much indeed for uh, uh, you know for joining me and listen I, I wish you all the luck in the world uh, uh, you know good health and uh, listen I'm looking forward to seeing you on stage once again with Mike Denver as soon as it's safe to do so thanks very much Jay thanks lovely, lovely, lovely to chat to you